morning, Simon here, Explosive Action, and I am here with my promised 31 days of Halloween video, 31 days of horror. I managed to watch a horror movie every night of Halloween, of October, and uh, we have a quick chat about them, and I'm going to try and keep it quick because I don't want this to go for 31 minutes or longer, so let's get going. For night number one, I watched Exeter, which is a 2015 horror movie and was filled with annoying teenagers that thankfully all died by the usual one or so at the end. Uh, it was a sort of a riff on an exorcism kind of thing and um, it wasn't too bad. Uh, pretty violent when it uh, came to the kills and um, honestly I was really quite annoyed by most of the characters. That's the thing that's sort of grinding, grinding my gears but uh, yeah, overall, uh, overall, it was a pretty decent watch. Not a bad way to start the 31 days. And um, I'll give it a hesitant recommendation to at least check it out. And day two was Mark of the Devil, 1970 film. This is like the exploitation brother to Witchfinder General. Uh, German film. It's got a very young Udo Kier. And I thought it was really, really good. Really good stuff. Um, quite sadistic for the age, definitely. Um, the special features go into the fact that uh, they uh, they could have only got away with this in Germany at that time, trying to release this in the UK. Yeah, would not have happened. Um, lots of torture scenes, as in like the uh, the classic um, torture um, implements of say the Spanish Inquisition and uh, and the witch trials kind of era. So. Uh, yeah, if you know Witchfinder General, it's a similar film, and just a bit more sadistic in German. Good stuff. For day number three, I watched Altered, the first film on this set, uh, which is uh, directed by one of the directors from the Blair Witch Project, as it says on the front, uh, but it's not a found footage film. This was really good, I thought. Um, uh, quite a reduced amount of sets. It's basically just in, like, two or three rooms in a house, and uh, it involves... A group of guys that for 15 years have been living with this history of an alien abduction in their group and they've finally as they think gotten revenge by capturing an alien and taking it to one of the fourth people in their little group and uh, tie it to the table and I don't think they quite know what to do next they I think they want to have torture on like whatever but they don't quite know what to do and it goes a about as pear-shaped as you could expect. So, um, yeah, altered. Some really creepy scenes. It's quite uh, quite well done, so recommended. For night number four, I watched The Legend of Halloween Jack. Um, this was quite a low-budget rip on um, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Very, very similar, basically. And um, honestly, it was better than it deserved to be. Um it's from the director of those awful Robert films, the killer doll franchise, Robert. And there's a sequel to it. I'm a bit worried about watching it. But this one, it manages to be above average. I don't really know why. I can't really explain why. It's just, I guess it's short. Uh, it is fairly well paced. The acting is not terrible for something that's such low budget. And... Um, you know, most of the kills are sort of off screen, but honestly, I just was entertained through the whole movie. Uh, the scarecrow that comes back from the dead to kill people. It worked. Night number five, I watched Bells, also called Murder by Phone. This is a real fantastic film from the 80s that badly needs some kind of DVD or Blu-ray release. I really don't know what's going on here. Um, it's about a, uh, well, you don't know from the start, but... People are receiving phone calls, there's a tone on the phone, then they start bleeding from the head and then the phone explodes and the person gets ejected out the window. Basically that just keeps happening over and over and the police are trying to determine how it's happening and there's, uh, yeah, there's there's lots of really cool stuff in Bells. Um, I really wish I, I, I could get this in front of more people. Uh, the American release on VHS Murder by Phone is much shorter, like 10 minutes shorter. So you want to get this one, Bells, and it's just a very well done film. So um, seek it out in some way. I don't know how you'll get it, but 
this roadshow tape is definitely the best way for me to watch it. Night number six, I watched Plagueers. This is a uh, pretty recent-ish, I think about eight years old or so, um, sci-fi horror. Very cheap, very low budget, set on a spaceship, and it's to do with uh, space zombies and demons. Um, the basic plot is a spaceship has a item that they've salvaged on board, and when a uh, group of hot vixen... Uh, pirates i suppose take over their ship um the device breaks and unleashes a zombie virus basically on everybody and uh, people are converted and it gets gory and splattery the acting is atrocious but it's actually a pretty fun film and it's fast paced so uh check out plagues it's pretty good night seven i watched Deathline, also called raw meat um, this was pretty good from the mid 70s, I think. Very British. Um, this involves Detective Inspector Donald Pleasance, who is hamming the whole thing up. He is so hamming this up. Um, who's investigating uh, disappearances of um, people in and around the train network uh, of London. And um, when it comes to a fairly high uh, public servant official, disappearing then he has to really start acting on it and uh, basically if you've seen chud this was before there was chud there's stuff going on down in this uh, subway system and uh, he has to go and investigate it so yeah mind the doors this is deathline pretty good night number eight i watched george romero's diary of the dead this was his uh, fifth zombie film uh, so this one took place after land of the dead um and was also his answer to a found footage style movie, which was popular, being popularized at the time. Um, basically, a group of teenagers or young adults are filming uh, their own horror movie, and at the same time is the zombie outbreak, and their movie becomes real. But now they've got cameras, so they just start to film that. And uh, yeah, it's got some pretty good scenes in it. There's some stuff in the hospital that was actually really well done. Some good practical effects uh, and a few little dodgy CG bits, but um, it was better than I was expecting. Um, and uh, I've heard that the one that comes after this, Survival of the Dead, is pretty atrocious. So anyway, Diary of the Dead, pretty good. For night number nine, I finally watched Cult of Chucky, the, uh, the last Chucky film in the original franchise. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. That was such a great film. Really, really good fun. Um, I was very impressed with... Uh, the Chucky animation and how it mixed with uh, an actual doll for certain scenes. It was very well done. Did not look cartoony at all. And um, I got a good chuckle when there was, well, the cult of Chucky, the many, many Chuckies. Um, strong film, strong acting, and a good idea keeping it all sort of located in the hospital and as a direct sequel to um, the, uh, what was the one before it? I cannot remember the name. I've gone and forgotten the bloody thing. Ah, uh, da, 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 Curse of Chucky, which I liked very much as well. So yes, Cult of Chucky gets a double thumbs up from me. And for night number 10, we watched The Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder in Hell. What a title. As it says, The Japanese Evil Dead. So this was a film shot in 1995 on what looks like really crusty 16mm elements. Was not edited until 2005 and did not come out until 2009 just sat shelved and this dvd didn't come out until about 2015 or so um maybe maybe 16 i can't remember now and that was the first time that most people got to see it but anyway it's basically uh a well for whatever reason a bodybuilder his ex-girlfriend and a psychic um go to a haunted house it's haunted because the girlfriend's dad died in the house i think and it doesn't really matter. It's just Evil Dead by Japanese people. It's the same kind of thing. It's crazy. Um, a lot of the scenes are ripped right off. Um, some cool stop motion effects and uh, no CG to be found. And it's barely cracking an hour long. Um, definitely check this one out. Bloody Muscle Body Better in Hell. It's definitely the Japanese Evil Dead. Lots of fun. So for nights 11 and 12, I was feeling kind of poorly, had a bit of a virus and did not feel up to movies. So I watched uh, this series, Thriller, which is a, a 70s British series. Um, 
and episodes are about 50 minutes long or so. I watched about four episodes of it. This is an excellent series. I don't know why I hadn't seen it earlier. Um, it's very, well, it's very British and of the time, and um, each story is completely independent. And um, the if you've ever seen the current um, sort of spoof horror series Inside Number 9, I think they base that entirely off this. It's really well done stuff. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know what else to say about it. The, um, the episodes are just very strong, very British, and um, very high class. So definitely check out Thriller. I think there's more than two seasons that I've got here. I think it's about six or so. Um, check it out. It's definitely worth watching. So for night 13, uh, I rented a movie, which is why I don't have it here to show you, and you're looking at a floating digital image. I watched A Ghost Story uh, from 2017. Um, I thought it was going to be a horror movie, but really it really wasn't. It was just a horror-themed drama, I suppose. But it was really good. Um, basically, a man uh, in, a, in a young relationship, he dies in a car accident, wakes up in hospital uh, under the bed sheet as he's dead and gets up and walks away um, and goes back to the house and it's sort of sixth sense in a way that um, he's just getting on with like existing as far as he knows and he's trying to uh, watch what his uh, widowed wife is uh, is doing with her life but he spends the whole thing um, quite cleverly it's like a Halloween costume, he's just under the bed sheet with the two uh, holes for eyes. And that's all you ever see, and he never speaks. And uh, he's just watching life around him, and we learn that time is not linear, so things keep moving backwards and forwards. It's really quite interesting. Um, particularly I thought was, was interesting was that he can communicate with uh, other ghosts. So you, you do see another ghost that's a bed sheet, and... Um, they speak in just subtitles. It, it's quite a strange film, and uh, as I said, it's not a horror, but it was um, definitely a horror-themed, supernatural-themed, um, and quite a well-done movie. Night 14, I watched Colobos, which is a reasonably unknown late 90s slasher, and god damn, I've never seen anything as 90s as this. Think of something like Scream, and then just amp up the 90s. It is so 90s. I got a half hour in, and I was getting close to turning it off it was really starting to pain me i hated every character but then the kills started and they were pretty good some were quite funny and um they didn't hold back on the guru it was pretty bloody so that saw me through to the end and the ending was was kind of interesting so it definitely picked up but christ that first 30 minutes was hard night 15 i watched beyond evil the new vinegar syndrome blu-ray release uh, this one was okay. It was fairly tedious for a lot of it, I thought. Might have been my frame of mind of the day. I don't know. But um, basically, John Saxon and his wife, yes, that John Saxon, um, they are in a, well, I guess it's a haunted house. It has a spirit that is part of the house. And the wife gets possessed. And he doesn't believe it. And the witch doctors of the town keep saying, no, seriously, dude, she's possessed. And he eventually believes it, and they try to get an exorcism happening and all that kind of stuff, and she shoots lasers from her eyes, as you can see on the cover. Um, but it was just lots. It was just slow in many parts of the film. I found that kind of hard to focus, but uh, I'll give it another go one day. There was definitely merit to the movie, um, but I can't quite recommend it at this point. Beyond Evil. Night 16, I watched Necromancer, 80s... Uh, supernatural horror film this is a load of good fun i really enjoyed this one um the girl you can see on the front cover there uh is uh, unfortunately raped by her uh, school pals i suppose and um instead of taking it to the police uh, her friend convinces her to take it to a demonologist medium who then puts a curse on all the boys involved and they are killed in gory violent ways by the demon you can see there on the cover and she wants it to stop because it's just all too much and then you just can't take back a curse and uh yeah hilarity ensues necromancer good fun film night 17 i finally took this box set off the shelf it's been there for a decade the hammer house of horror 
from 1980, and I watched the first movie-length episode. They're all about an hour long. Uh, the House That Bled to Death, and it was really, really good. Hopefully the rest of the series is that good. Um, it's sort of summarized by the title. Um, a young family rent a old house in England, and uh, things start happening. Uh, a little girl's cat is killed in a terrible way, and... Uh, Things start falling off walls, and then there's a party, and blood drips out of the pipes, and it's all that kind of stuff. Very well done, very Hammer, and uh, I look forward to watching more episodes of the Hammer House of Horror in this box set. Night 18, I watched The Prey, and I'm very happy that I gave this film another chance, and thank you to Arrow for letting me have another chance. This is a film that um, I had on VHS from Thorn EMI. I watched it a couple of years ago and thought it was probably the worst 80s slasher I'd ever seen. It spent most of its time dealing with uh, a gypsy love triangle and it was just horrendously boring and you never saw any monster. And uh, talking to good old buddy Extra the Mutilator, he didn't understand what I was talking about, basically. Turns out I have the international cut of the film and he in America, and he loves the film, has the US cut and they are radically different films. Thankfully, Arrow here have done a rest restoration of both, but the primary version is the US cut, which is like 15 minutes shorter, thank you, Roger Corman, and does not have any stupid gypsies. It's just a backwards slasher, and people getting picked off one by one, and a hideous monster. It's just, just that. That's all it is. It's pretty straightforward, and I can't believe they made it a longer version with gypsies. It was just stupid. So The Prey now gets my recommendation. Night 19, I watched The Slayer, another 80s slasher rescued by Arrow, and given the HD treatment. This wasn't too bad. Um, it wasn't as good as I was hoping, unfortunately. Um, it's about a group of people that are stranded on an island. They take up shelter in a house, and... At the same time, uh, one of the girls keeps having these dreams of a killer, and the killer is killing in pretty specific, murderous ways, and when she wakes up the next day, one of her friends has been picked off in that same way. So, is it a premonition, or what's going on? Um, it's not too bad, but it just sort of dragged quite a bit, is what I was finding, um, but it paid off quite well at the end, so... Still worth a watch, and I'll watch it again and see if my opinion improves. The Slayer. Night 20, I watched Cries and Shadows, also called The Exorcist 3, if you believe it. Um, it is basically what you are seeing. It is an Italian ripoff of The Exorcist. It was made before there was the real Exorcist 2, and it's just like you would expect the Italians would do to The Exorcist. It's the same damn plot, but sleazier and with boobs. So... It gets a recommendation. Night 21, I watched Beyond the Gates, which is a pretty recent film. Um, this was really good, actually. Um, I was expecting something. I don't know what I was expecting, but I got something good. Um, it's about uh, two brothers that are closing up their deceased father's video shop. As they're rummaging through the shelves, they find a game, a bit like those nightmare board games, This one, or VCR games. This one's called Beyond the Gates. They think, why not? Let's give it a go. Pop the tape in. Barbara Crampton, as you can see there, is on the screen. And as they're watching and trying to play the game, it becomes pretty obvious that it's real and that she's taking pauses to wait for them to actually respond to her, and it gets all a bit supernatural. Like I said on the front there, that's quite a good description. A bloody grown-up version of Jumanji. That's not bad. And... Um, they are forced to play the game, and there's some pretty grisly killings in the movie. I I thought that was quite good. It gets quite bloody, it earns the R rating. And it doesn't overstay its welcome, it's quite short. Night 22 is The Horror of Dracula, better known as just Dracula. 1958, the first Hammer Horror Dracula film. This is just pure class. I'd actually never seen this original one. Um, it's the same old story from previous movies. Uh, involving Count Dracula in his big house and Dr. Van Helsing trying to off him. And it's pure class. Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, 
you just couldn't ask for much better. It is, uh, it's not a hugely long film. None of the hammers really were. Um, you know the plot of Dracula. It's, it's that, but it's done by Hammer. And, um, of course, for, for 1958, I thought some of the effects they got away with were quite grisly. That At the time, that would have turned a few heads, I think. So, yeah, obviously I recommend The Horror of Dracula. For Night 23, I watched Livid from the director of Inside. This was really, really quite good. Um, so it's of uh, a young girl that is a, a trainee caregiver, so goes to uh, people's houses to uh, assist them when they need help. And um, she goes to one house that has a very old lady that is permanently tied to um, a machine to help her breathe. She's comatose, has been done that way for years. But the house is a giant mansion and she is rich and there's lots of nice goodies floating around. She comes up with a plot with her boyfriend to steal things. So they go there at the middle of the night. She's not going to wake up because she's in machines and she's a coma. Yeah, things get pretty bad. It doesn't go as straightforward as they were expecting just trying to rob this house. Um, I don't want to say too much more, but you can imagine that it gets pretty livid. Night 24, I watched Worry Dolls. Uh, this is uh, this is quite interesting. So um, uh, it opens with a fantastic murder, grisly, grisly killing involving like a workman's long drill, like one of those ones that's like a meter long, going through someone's head. It's fantastic. But anyway, um, it's about these Guatemalan um, little figurines, little dolls, trinkets that um, make their way into the wrong hands are being sold to people and when these people anybody touches them they will soon become pretty possessed by the forces of these dolls and get murderously violent against anybody and um, yeah it's it's got a bit of a who done it how how do we solve it murder mystery kind of thing going on but there's also just grisly grisly murders and grisly deaths and it's quite over the top at times. Um, I really enjoyed Worry Dolls and uh, recommend it. And Night 25, it's a little bit of a cop-out, but it's Terminator 2. I saw it in the cinema with a good friend of mine. I'd never seen it in the cinema on the big screen. And look, this is a 5 out of 5 movie for me. I'm not going to talk much about it. It's fantastic. Um, but what I will say is I'm going to let it pass as a horror film, sort of, in this, in this uh, roundup, because some of those kills from the T-1000 are still as effective as they were back then, uh, particularly the poor security card that gets the uh, the needle through the head and then uh, the foster parents were through the milk milk uh, carton, that kind of stuff. It's actually still pretty horrific, especially on the big screen. So uh, T2, it gets a pass. It's a fantastic movie. Night 26, I watched the Japanese movie Junk. This is a fantastic one. I've seen it a couple of times, had this for years. Um, basically it's, uh, some jewelry robbers that are trying to do a deal with the Yakuza. They pick a abandoned warehouse as the trading place, but what they don't know is that it's the same warehouse used by the U.S. government to resurrect the dead. And, um, yeah, it, it goes all a bit reanimator and then it becomes Dawn of the Dead. Uh, really, really good effects. The zombies are good good stuff they're slow movers you can take them down because they're slow movers but when they get you they bite you and you turn it's proper zombie goodness and i highly recommend junk and for night 27 i watched the recent indie horror terrifier this is going to be joint uh winner for my pick of the uh, the month for a new film anyway this was fantastic i don't know why i'd sat on this for so long um it's very simple slasher plot uh, Art the Clown, who you can see there, just starts terrorizing girls on Halloween night and we see him be creepy and we see him killing people. And it's just that simple uh, until he gets, well, taken down, I suppose. The kills in this are full on. He's holding a saw in this picture and there's a girl upside down. Yep, I'll let you draw the rest of it. and It takes a long time. He's really creepy too, the uh, the paint effects on art and the guy that played him. Um, he never speaks, he's just 
you know, just a clown. He's a mute, and uh, it's very, very effective. Um, but Jesus, the kills in this. Fantastic stuff. Highly recommend Terrifier. Night 28, I watched this, and I don't know what this was about. I have no idea. This film, what the fuck was going on in this movie? It is some kind of riff on uh, Dante's Inferno. It's sort of traditional folklore, folk horror, but it's an art house film. There's very little dialogue. Uh, it goes between color and black and white. It uh, goes into scenes that are inside the protagonist's head, as far as I can work out. Um, there's scenes that are pretty horrific, and they're also just weird. I don't know what's going on in this movie. I, uh, I can't recommend it. It's it's only like an hour, and it felt like four. Uh, one day I'll watch it again, see if it makes sense. But at the moment, eh, nah. Night 29, Boarding School. Uh, this film stars the, the kid on the front named Jacob, who, um, 13-year-old kid, is a bit of a uh, hard one to uh, work with with his parents apparently and is sent to um, boarding school along with a bunch of other kids that are also not quite fitting in with life and uh, I know what you're thinking it's kids in movies it's not going to be great but bloody hell these kids are properly trained they all play very different characters they're all stuck in this school and they're all very strong that's the main thing about it. They're very strong actors, these kids, especially Jacob, the main lead here. And um, the film itself is these kids in uh, the boarding school with these pretty creepy teacher sort of custodians and it doesn't really make sense, the kind of teaching and the things they're learning. And uh, they start seeing, the kids start noticing things not quite right around the place. And uh, it gets kind of suspiria uh, in places, and then it it goes into whole new realms as well, and uh, did not see the ending coming a mile off. So I really, really, really dug Boarding School. I'm looking at trying to get the German Blu-ray for an upgrade, so that'll tell you what I thought of that movie. Definitely check out Boarding School. If you're going to check one movie out of uh, this update, pick Boarding School. And Night 30, I watched Splatter Beach. If you're going to pick one movie to avoid in this update this was a piece of shit 2007 i think sequel to uh, an 80s film called um splatter farm and uh this is just atrocious this is uh up there with um raiders of the lost shark which is one of the few films i watched and immediately returned um i've left it too long to return this it stars erin brown better known as porn actress misty monday but she does not get a kid off so what's the point uh really really bad very cheap uh monster movie i suppose slasher monster kind of thing um whenever anything starts to get decent this crappy like surf rock band just keeps popping up and playing these inane songs called splatter beach i think and uh the film is so cheap that they have the band filmed against a green screen and have the dancers on the beach against the same green screen and then put beach footage behind it this film sucked but thankfully for night 31 halloween I watched a decent film, and that is the Halloween 2018 uh, sequel. I not got around to watching it until uh, a couple of nights ago, so this was fresh for me, and um, I quite liked it. It's not amazing, um, but I'm also not a huge mega fan of the franchise. I like the movies, but I'm not in love with like the entire thing. I can say that about all the franchises, to be honest. Friday the 13th, uh, etc. I like the movies, but I'm not obsessed or anything like that. But uh, when it comes to this film, I thought it was a pretty good standalone movie uh, and worked as a sequel uh, to the first film as well uh, pretty, pretty well. It was interesting seeing things like Michael Myers in prison. Uh, you never saw his face, but you could see more of his sort of body shape and his, uh, his makeup as in like his creation, not his makeup. Um, 
it was fairly obvious, of course, he was going to get out of prison and wreak havoc. And um, I quite like what they did with Laurie Strode, made her kind of a Sarah Connor badass in like a T1 to T2 transition. That was kind of neat. And um, yeah, overall, I, I quite enjoyed the film and, and uh, keen to see where they go with the, the new Halloween 3, whatever they're going to call it. And that is it. That is my 31 days of horror. I am pretty impressed with myself managing to watch a movie every night. Um, even when I got sick, I still managed to watch things that counted. So that was good. And I hope you enjoyed watching this quick recap. Hopefully by the time I edit it together, it's reasonably quick. But you know me, it'll end up being 45 minutes long. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.